Hello and welcome to Constituency Report on Shaw TV. My name is Edward May and with us in the studio today is Sue Hamill, New Democrat MLA for Surrey Green Timbers and Official Opposition De Deputy Critic for Health and the Deputy House Leader for the New Democrats. Welcome to the show, Sue. Thank you. Glad to be here. Now, I'd like to start off by talking about uh, your new role as Deputy House Leader. Now, a lot of people probably don't know exactly what that entails. I was wondering if you could get a, give us a sense of what, what's involved. Well, the Deputy House Leader is the deputy to the House Leader. Mm -hmm. So there's actually two positions. One is the House Leader, who mm -hmm. takes the major public role in the House around issues that pertain to the House. And the Deputy House Leader backs that person up. Um, and is their sounding board or um, a person that they make decisions with. So some of the decisions that the House Leader and the Deputy House Leader have to deal with is all the management of the House, like mm -hmm. the, the flow of information that goes into the House. So um, we would deal with uh, the private members' bills, all the motions, the, roll, the rollout of estimates. We also deal with question period mm -hmm. and all the activity that takes place in the house itself that has to be managed and has to be um, given some kind of order and some kind of direction. And so the house leader and the deputy house leader do that. They also deal with disputes. Mm -hmm. If there, there may be motions of privilege or there may be other motions, they assist in that kind of management of the house and mm -hmm. they, they deal with also the politics of the house. Um, and the politics between the two parties, and we have two, as well as the independents. And so they're part of the um, management of the activity in the chambers and around the House when the House is sitting. Mm -hmm. And playing a big role in, in making sure things go smoothly? Yes, that's correct. Um, make sure that there's agreements between both sides and the independents on direction. So let me give you an example. Um, we have had a very short session mm -hmm. and we are, there are more bills coming in than we expected. So we have, um, we are in negotiations or discussions mm -hmm. with the other side on either extending the session or extending the hours or giving more time to have a fuller discussion on the issues that are in front of the House. Mm -hmm. um, and there are many um, issues that need F further examination, like um, one of the things that we do um, is we have time for estimates, and that goes back to you can't have um, taxation without a debate mm -hmm. on those taxes, and estimates is when we debate those taxes, and so the house management team looks at the flow of estimates and whether we're getting enough time. They'll talk about the with the other house leader what the order is and how th that order unfolds because it will affect the ministries. For example, if you have health, you would have, there's multi multiple pieces to health mm -hmm. and you couldn't, it wouldn't be reasonable to have all of the health bureaucracy sort of sitting there waiting to assist the minister in, de in answering questions. And so there's a discussion and a negotiations around the order of um, how things will unfold mm -hmm. and the order of debate of bills. And working out and making sure everything gets its the amount of time it needs. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, you also may have something come up that is, is um, quick, right? Like right. some unknown thing that moves into the house fairly quickly that may need a lot of discussion. Um, with the with all parties within the house mm -hmm. um, to come up with some way of handling it as it goes goes through the house so um, but a lot of house management like the day to day to day stuff of house managers house management centers around question period mm -hmm. which is the time when the opposition gets to hold the government accountable mm -hmm. and so we work with the communications and research department in our in our small staff mm -hmm. to work with the MLAs to take that half an hour that we have to hold the government accountable and make it worthwhile on mm -hmm. behalf of the community and the citizens of BC and so that's a very very important part of um, house management and that actually starts early in the morning when you first get the news of the day 
Um, it may have been, questions may have been developing over time mm -hmm. um, that come forward. You do, um, people come in and discuss possible examples of what might be in question period. Mm -hmm. MLAs do that. Uh, the host management team sifts through those possibilities, decides a lineup, and then works with everyone to present that lineup during question period. And that, that is the sort of focal point of the day's activity in terms of, of host management and then all sorts of other stuff goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Now the house has been in, in session for a while and, and you mentioned it was a short session. Do you feel that, that all, the, all the legislation and, and, and the government estimates, that, uh, which is basically a debate in um, how much money each ministry spends, do you feel that there's enough time in this session to, to, to address all those issues as it stands? No, there has not been enough time and that's why we have requested further time to debate given that there are fewer or more bills than we had understood to begin with. Um, and so there is a discussion on extending the hours or extending the time that we're here to to sit. So no, there's um, uh, it certainly has been a truncated um, session mm -hmm. and not um, unusually, uh, very unusually mm -hmm. tight. But, uh, you know, those are the circumstances we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. This is the first uh, spring session, I recall, being this short. But uh, th there is a bit of a trend, uh, especially with the fall session that happens of, of, uh, in the recent years of, of spending less time in the legislature. What do you think that trend represents? Oh, I. I think it's um, it's lamentable. Mm -hmm. uh, we're here. We we're here to do the people's business, mm -hmm. and the bills that come forward are serious, and they need wholesome debate, and uh, we need um, wholesome de debate around estimates. Mm -hmm. And there are many critics who have um, have had to cut their their discussion short. And I think that doesn't serve the community well. Mm -hmm. I mean, we this is our job. This is what we're paid to do, um, to come in and debate and to make decisions. I always say when uh, I'm when people ask me what we do here, mm -hmm. I say that there's two major, major roles for the legislature. And one is um, they make the law and they spend the money. Mm -hmm. So they make the rules that people must live by and they spend the money that that we as taxpayers give to the government to spend on our behalf mm -hmm. in our in the in in our in what's good for us right in our best interest and so we do those two main things over here and you need time to do them well mm -hmm. and if you rush the estimates then you are rushing through sometimes billions of dollars mm -hmm. that we're spending and we're not given adequate our job as opposition members is to question how that money is being spent on behalf of the taxpayers. That's our job and it's a reasonable thing that we should do and it's and we should be given the time to do it well. Mm -hmm. Now, now, part of the reason why, why, of course, it was a bit of a shortened session is, is the BC Liberals had to, to uh, choose their new leader. And, of course, they chose Christy Clark. She's now the premier. And she campaigned on a slogan of change and said, you know, change begins now. How much do you think that she, she does really actually represent change? Oh, I, um, I, I, I think it's more of the same mm -hmm. with, a, with um, just a bit of a different spin. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, no, there's no two ways about it. The major direction that the government has gone and is going will continue. Um, the um, Christy Clark and the Liberals represent a certain segment segment of the community. They represent um, big business and the corporations. They speak on their behalf. They govern on their behalf, and they, um, you know, it's difficult to move them off that because that's their position. Um, and fair enough, uh, you know, um, that's not going to change. That's mm -hmm. not going to change. And where we have seen. Over time, the um, the income level or the power of spending for average families being um, uh, just eroded, while um, there are big um, cuts to those people. The, the, if you have a cut, 
Mm -hmm. And it's done on a, on a percentage basis. The person who gets the biggest percentage of that cut is the person who has the highest income. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, um, that's, that's not going to change. And Christy Clark will not change that. Ms. Clark will continue to move largely down the path that um, Gordon Campbell has um, put in front of her. Mm -hmm. Now, in a few minutes, we have to take a break. We'll be displaying contact information of where you can reach Sue Hamill in her constituency office. But before the break, uh, I wanted to ask, of course, the, the New Democrats also chose a new leader uh, with Adrian Dix. And I was wondering if I could get your perspective on, on how you see the difference between Christy Clark and the BC Liberals and Adrian Dix and the New Democrats. Well, I think the major difference is a fundamental um, embracing of, of one clear concept and that is and if I could phrase it as I've heard Adrian mm -hmm. um, Adrian Dix he's concerned about the equality amongst our community and he has seen over time as he's articulated it that the disparity um, is growing mm -hmm. instead of um, remaining the same or, or condensing mm -hmm. and if you have a large disparity in your community between the rich and the poor or the wealthy and the middle class or what you have is an unhealthy community because you have a higher rate of a higher incidence of poor health you have higher incidences of crime you have a whole myriad of, of social problems that that measure the health or the overall well-being of a community are exacerbated by um, disparity of income mm -hmm. now um, or inequality lack of equality between community members and I think Adrian is very clear about that concept he wants to build um, a healthy and um, more equitable um, community he's concerned about the equality amongst us that has been growing over the past um, number of years. So now, I have not heard um, Christy Clark articulate that. She talks about families, yet families have been hit very hard by a myriad of, of flat taxes, mm -hmm. which you would call like um, MSP premiums, increase in hydro, a whole bunch of, of increases that just hit the ordinary person's back pocket, mm -hmm. and it increases that disparity. Mm -hmm. Now, now what, what about in terms of, of management style? I know Kevin Falcon, her, her own, one of her own cabinet members, called the, her management style ready, fire, aim, as in not a lot of planning. What do you, what do you think about the contrast in the management style and the way they, they operate? Oh, I think um, Adrian is very, um, he's very, very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. He is he is a student of public policy. Mm -hmm. He understands the implications of um, policy and is, and in my estimation, is extremely thoughtful and would um, think things through before moving on them. I think Christy Clark is a little bit more um, out there, more, um, you know, a little less, a um, little um, more cavalier, a right. little more um, in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, well, we have to take a short break. Uh, please stay with us as we continue our conversation with Sue Hamill, New Democrat MLA for Surrey Green Timbers.
Hello and welcome back to Constituency Report on Shaw TV. My name is Edward May and again today we're speaking with Sue Hamill, new Democrat MLA for Surrey Green Timbers. Sue, before the break we were talking about uh, the, the legislature and the difference between Christy Clark and BC Liberals, Adrian Dix and the new Democrats. We had to unfortunately go to a break. But I wanted to continue on our conversation a little bit about the legislature. Of course, question period being a big part of, of the legislature. One of the big issues that, that comes up time and time again the HST and I was wondering if we could talk about the referendum a bit maybe starting with how this how the referendum is being conducted well the 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 um, petition mm -hmm. or the initiative was under the initiatives act but the um, vote mm -hmm. has been moved from the initiatives act to the referendum act and the re referendum act has no rules mm -hmm. or very few and therefore, um, there's no spending limits. Mm -hmm. There's no restrictions on third person. There's um, very little sort of law and order mm -hmm. to the Referendum Act. And therefore, it'll be a kind of free-for-all for the next um, month and a half, and, two months. And I suppose that's why people are being inundated already with advertisements. Well, I, you know, I have to say that I don't watch a lot of TV. Mm -hmm. But I have seen some accountants, and um, there's evidently an ad about a stick person or something that, That's right. <laughs> you know, there's a few things that are out there, so I've heard. But I think people are going to be inundated, and I think that there's also the moves that they make to change the referendum, or the HST will also try to move along their ability to win this fight. It's been a ver very interesting. People didn't think that... Or, or the opinion makers did not think that the people of British Columbia would pass the initiative. And so I think there is now a healthier respect for the attitude and the position that the people of British Columbia are mm -hmm. taking. And therefore you're going to see a major thrust in terms of spending to try to get people to convince them that this uh, pill is good for them. Mm -hmm. So people people will be receiving ballots, uh, I believe, mid-June. They'll have until just after mid-July to, to cast that ballot. And w when you speak to people on the street, they're, they're finally relieved that they're going to finally get their say. Yeah. But then the government's spending millions of dollars. They're one of those advertisers spending millions of dollars, and they're trying to position themselves as sort of neutral on the issue. How much do you buy the, the, their neutrality on the issue? Oh, they're not neutral at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the, in their interest. They're not neutral in the House. They're not neutral when they're speaking on the, the HSD. They have a position, and they're promoting it. And mm -hmm. um, that surprises nobody. But, the, uh, but to be putting out the position that they're neutral is, is, again, not being straight up with British Columbians. And I think that's an underlying theme that the Liberals have had problem with. Mm -hmm. They've just not always been straight up with British Columbians. I mean, British Columbians can handle um, good news and bad news, um, mm -hmm. and they can make decisions. But what they don't like um, being is being had or being tried to be tricked or lied to. So um, nobody believes that the Liberals are neutral on the HST. Mm -hmm. They're not. They brought it in, and it's in their best interest that it be passed. Right. And they're trying to tinker with it now and they're they're coming up with fixes and, and anything really it seems That's to, right. To That's try. right. So what do you think will be on voters' minds when, when somebody's got their ballot in front of them, they're deciding how to what do you think some of the things that will be going through people's minds then? Well I think that most people will say to themselves, is this good for me? Mm -hmm. And if you again, as we talked earlier, put this in the context of other um, diming to death that the government has done. They, they, cut ta they cut somewhere, but then they dime to death. Mm -hmm. You, in all a whole myriad of other ways, the HST, um, hydro, MSP premiums, mm -hmm. and on and on the parks fees. It mm -hmm. just goes on and on. Ferry fees, mm -hmm. ferry hikes. and um, you, the, the per People will, in the end, say, why me? Why should I pay for a tax break to big business? Mm -hmm. Why should I? Why doesn't big business take on more of my tax burden? Why should I pay um, for them? I think that's what people will ask. 
how does it affect me and who's benefiting because clearly there is a benefit and the benefit goes to big business mm -hmm. and the classic example is the business who makes money off the HST and invests it south of the border mm -hmm. now it, I, it, it seems to me also that uh, that another big issue too is is of course the, the government's trying to gloss over but how much do you think people are gonna remember the original deception um, I think people will remember um, the original deception. I think they will remember it more um, when the election comes. Right. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. when I think it will be top of mind. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the HST, though, I think um, people will, yeah, well, that we will remember the deception, but in the end, they will um, vote based on their, their own um, self-interest. Mm -hmm which is where they should be. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, another promise that the BC Liberals made before the last election was about education and maintaining education services. And I was wondering, in, in terms of Surrey, and whether you think that promise has been lived up to? Well, I mean, I think you can put this in another context, right? You either raise taxes or you, or, you know, you, ra you dime people to death, mm -hmm. or you uh, don't provide the services. And what um, they have done in Surrey is, is it, it's actually unbelievable. What you have is, in the province, to a large extent, um, the population is falling. Mm -hmm. But in Surrey, we are the um, mirror image of that. We mm -hmm. are growing. We've been growing for a number of years, and our population is increasing. There's more houses being built. There's more communities being developed, and we need more schools. And we have not had a new school um, since 2005, mm -hmm. 2006. And it is now 2011, that's six years that we haven't had new capital funding. Now, mm -hmm. the, the irony is the uh, government will say we just opened a school. Well, that school was funded prior to 2005 and 2006. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine if you got funding today that it would take another four or five years for those schools to be built. Mm -hmm. So what they have done is put Surrey way behind the eight ball in terms of new schools. And to boot, what they've done in the last five years is change the, the contract around portables. And now portables, which you have to put up if you don't have classrooms mm -hmm. because you haven't had any new funding for schools, comes out of operating budget, which right. means it comes out of the cl kids, the classrooms, mm -hmm. the classrooms. Right, and the, ver the, uh, the where it should be, it's capital funding? Yeah, right. the money for classrooms, like the money to operate the classrooms is operating, the money for buildings is capital. Mm -hmm. Well, they take the money for portables out of operating. So that's actually taking them out of field trips or taking them out of, um, you know, things in the classroom mm -hmm. or or all the myriad of things that are needed in the classroom, projectors or films or, or paper or art, equip, art supplies, all those things, music, all those things, the money mm -hmm. goes over to, to portables. Mm -hmm. Now the government gave a grant of two million, but it doesn't cover the cost that the district has had to put out in terms of portables. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, we're getting close to the end of the show, but I, n I understand you brought some photos with you, and I was wondering if you could walk us through what was in sure. here. Sure. Oh, that's um, Safa. That's um, mm -hmm. uh, a wonderful event uh, celebrating mothers. So just recently, that's uh, Vasaki, um, and with uh, Jagger Brar, Jasbir Sandu, and Bruce Ralston, the four of us were out on Vasaki. Oh, that was interesting. That's um, St. Paul's Hospital. Uh, there was a, almost a catastrophe there when some of the electrical system went down. It's an old building that needs desperately to be replaced in the city of Vancouver. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the Lunar New Year and having a packet of uh, good luck to a little child there. The little red packets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was great. It's a great event. Mm -hmm. Very wet this year. And that's Winterfest. This is something that Surrey puts on. They have started a tradition of quite a few festivals at Holland Park, and one of them is Winterfest, and that's one of the um, 
people that was dressed up, and she's quite delightful. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, so just just to round off the show, of course, the the, se the house session, of course, we don't know how long it's going to go. You're going to try and stretch it out. But then after the house shuts down, we've got a short period. What happens between then and potentially an impending election? Well, we all do our business, right? Mm -hmm. we, um, we go back to our constituencies. We um, listen to our, uh, you know, we take casework. We handle issues that the, our constituents have. We we get out and we meet them and we try to understand their issues so that we, we also will be ready to represent them in an election. And do you think the BC Liberals have already started the campaign? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we've run out of time, but I want to thank you for joining us today. Okay, thank you. And thank you for watching Constituency Report on Shaw TV. Again, we were speaking with Sue Hamill, new Democrat MLA for Surrey Green Timbers.